Hi, we've been getting stuck into the letter to the Hebrews and you remember that the big message to those Christians who'd all grown up in Hebrew families was this, don't walk away from Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is God speaking to us. Jesus is God's perfect promised king. Jesus is the perfect high priest. And last time, Dan explained to us that Jesus is also the perfect sacrifice. So what he did for us on the cross once is all that you and I will ever need to be friends with God, to be forgiven. But so what? Does that make any difference to me now and in the future? Well, this last bit from Hebrews today is so exciting. And it's exciting because it tells us that Jesus has brought his rescued people to the perfect home, both now and forever. Look at this. You have come to the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. That is huge. That is so huge that it would be crazy to walk away from Jesus. So the writer of this letter says, look, this is all about two mountains. Mountain number one and mountain number two. Yeah, a bit like those, I suppose. Look, let me explain a bit more. Mountain number one was Mount Sinai. Now, if you said to those Hebrew Christians, Mount Sinai, they would know exactly the mountain that you meant. It's the mountain that God brought the people of Israel to after he rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. They were on their way to the land that God had promised to give them. And God told them to camp at the bottom of the mountain for two years. Yeah, that's a long old camping trip, isn't it? And while they were there, God spoke to them. So having rescued them, God spoke to them. And that was terrifying. There was thick cloud on the mountain. There was thunder and lightning. The whole mountain shook. There was the sound like a trumpet that got louder and louder and louder. And God came down onto the mountain in fire. And the people were told to, to stay back from the mountain. Even if they touched it, they would die. The people trembled with fear. Look at this. The sight was so terrifying that Moses, even Moses the priest, said, I am trembling with fear. And what God was doing there was teaching them and us that we need to take him seriously. You see, God isn't like some great big cuddly teddy bear. He's almighty God. We need to fear him, treat him with the utmost respect, try to obey him. But if that's all you know about God, then you're never going to feel at home with him. He's always going to seem stern, ferocious, like a really strict head teacher of a school. If that's your idea of God, you're never going to feel at home with him. It's going to feel like those Israelites felt camped at the bottom of Mount Sinai. You need to hear this next bit. Because we're told in verse 18, you have not come to Sinai, to a mountain that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom and storm. Instead, you have come to mountain number two, Mount Zion. And Mount Zion isn't an ordinary big lump of rock with snow on it where people go skiing or snowboarding or have snowball fights or whatever. This place is totally incredible. Check this out. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, of all people. So hang on, this mountain is actually a city, the city of the living God. And it's filled with thousands of angels, all praising God. And God's rescued people, the church, are there. And anyone who's there has got their name written into heaven. 
And the people who are there have come to God, the judge of all people, and yet they're totally at home with God. It's an amazingly joyful picture of a party with God on the mountain, not with the people in fear at the bottom of the mountain. But how? Why? Has God suddenly decided that sin doesn't matter anymore? No. It's because these people have come to Jesus, the mediator, and to the sprinkled blood, to his sprinkled blood. Jesus, who died on the cross, our perfect mediator, our perfect sacrifice. What Jesus did on the cross is everything that you or I will ever need to be forgiven and welcomed into God's family as his rescued children forever. So are you trusting in what Jesus has done for you? Because it massively changes things, doesn't it? And the thing is, for the Christian, Mount Zion has started already. Did you spot this? But you have come to Mount Zion. It's already started. You see, your home is not the house or the flat or the hall or residence that you live in at the moment for a short time, or even this fragile body that you're in at the moment. No, your home is the city of God, heaven. And it's a place that cannot be shaken or damaged or destroyed. It's forever. And one day God's rescued people will finally be taken there forever. Home. Jesus, God's son, God's perfect promised king, mediator, priest, sacrifice, has brought us to the perfect home. How could we walk away from that? How could we walk away from Jesus? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the forgiveness that he paid for. Thank you for the amazing, perfect home that he's brought us to. Help us to say yes to Jesus. Help us to be more and more thankful each day for all that he's done for us. In Jesus' awesome name. Amen.